That's when the cannibalism started. What was that? Let's do this. We're just going to go. This is, this sounds good so far. Sounds good we go. so it's far. Happening. Yes, sound. Can you hear me? Can, Can you, you hear, hear me? The glorious sound from the boys. Is the sound still a bad case of diarrhea? Oh, fuck. Yeah, we're giving it a redo. Oh. That's literally calling it, giving it a fucking oh. redo. It have a slim and dark fall. We mm. did it. Well, it's all right. Let's play the last video again. Just a second. <laughs> all right. Let's play low. Let's go back to the beginning. Uh, yeah, I'm in the same. And I want to talk about <laughs> families coming in each other. We're doing it. Play this video. Come in, my sister. I just, I am. I thought we got past pregnant? this. Well, I didn't Fuck. know. You just come in girls without even asking? Like, Jesus. Holy shit. Did uh, you just come in your sister? Yeah, I'll bet you're <laughs> sweet peppy I did. But All I know right, that he, there you go. There is up to a point where it's literally tongue in cheek, right? I know for sure. a fact that there is, it. it's a funny element, but there's still, like, the the damage that incest does to the home. Absolutely. It's irreparable, no matter how hot your stepsister is, no matter how hot your stepmother is, if she's stuck in the laundry machine, and you start going at it, even though uh -huh. she says, no, 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 stop, stop, begins to like it, when it comes down to it, you still are going to have to deal with the psychic baggage of every single time you sit down at Christmas Eve, she's going to go, and then, or be oh, like, could or have been... she's gonna have a mental breakdown and just something like, I'm just gonna have to tell your father about what happened to us oh, between my. us on Arbor Day. Well, you don't want to tell anybody that kind of news on Arbor Day. Think about the trees, they're gonna go crashing them all down, cutting them all down. Uh, if you are a step sibling out there, we do apologize from the last podcast on the left. We're sorry for the narrative around you and your step siblings. We know most of you don't have sex with each other. If most. I knew someone who had a step sibling, I apologize for all the bullies making fun of anyone right now in high school because it is funny to joke, yeah. be like, oh, you have sex with your sister, your stepsister. Yeah. Um, but we're not taking into account the fact that you're struggling and your home may be a little bit broken, even though it seems like it has come together. Um, so if you are yeah. out there and not having sex with your step sibling, that's off. And the, the main thing is, yes, if you're not having sex with them, because you know what I'd also say, too? The big thing is, I think the big scenario is to avoid when it comes to not having sex with the step sibling. Oh, I know, I know. I think the way to avoid I know. I, I you can, can hear you. I, I don't want to hear anyone anymore. <laughs> so no, but we need to hear you. What? You can't hear me. You're off mic. You can't hear me like this. That's good. I can hear That's you. That's good. I That's solid. You. Now, you want to avoid crop tops? You want to avoid? No, asking. I'm just unfortunate. No, you right can't now. blame. The, you are doing honestly. Totally I think you should be able to walk around your own home nude and not have to worry about your stepsister getting all horny for you. I am just saying, <laughs> it's never the stepsister's fault. I don't She's know. Always the one uh, who's. I just, I've seen some stepbrothers I've, who were just in the bathroom taking yeah. a pee, and all There's of a sudden, there's something She's, about like oh, a woman yeah. just if you're slapping the bean in the middle of the locker, mm -hmm. right? And you know for a fact that your stepbrother is about to get back from basketball ball practice you're cruising for a fucking bruising well and of course he's very <laughs> sweaty and uh, you can imagine how that might trigger a few pheromonic yes. thoughts i don't know people are saying people are already upset about the idea of no crop tops but when it comes down to it yeah there's nothing wrong with crop tops step? i know but it's a gateway your sister wears a lot of crop tops. Are you yeah. saying that you are occasionally enticed and that's why you don't like it? Ugh. Is that what Ugh. you're saying? Because that's that's that, is what, wrong that is with what you said. I'm that literally going to walk, said. I'm gonna yeah, walk out of this fucking room. You're going to walk. literally going to walk like, real fast. That Ugh. was the You did bring up you crop tops. And that's yeah, I just said a word, you disgusting piece of fuck. And I literally <laughs> can't continue with the show. I can't continue with the show. Wow. All right. So it looks disgusting. Henry has a bit of a tummy ache. <laughs> I've got a bad that. case of diarrhea. Well, that, let's not ruin <laughs> Thank it. Thank God. So I know. Yeah, because we know oh, this is big. This, this is, is big very big. Uh, so let's show this. Now, as I mentioned earlier, when we travel, sometimes you travel to places and you might not know the language and you have to communicate somehow. And, oca and occasionally, because you're traveling, you might have different kinds of food. Maybe you get a tummy ache, which happens because sure. if you're traveling to New York, all of a sudden, boo, you got a street meat, Ooh. you got a hot dog. Mm -hmm. That yeah. might give you a case of the tummy aches. But how are you going to work? Articulate it. Let's show a training video. Here we go. I'm excited for this. Oh. 
call an ambulance. Okay. Hold on. Well, she, yes. Where does it hurt? Ah, uh, my stomach. Uh, the stomach. Uh, Man, it sucks to have fucking uh, diarrhea. Do they call the ambulance for diarrhea in Japan? It depends how bad it is. Yeah, yeah. A bad case of diarrhea. Diarrhea. But there's a different I way to say it. A bad case, bad case of, of diarrhea. Of diarrhea. I have a, I have a bad, bad case, case of diarrhea. Of diarrhea. Of diarrhea. And now this is the hit song. This is better than the weekend halftime show. Oh, diarrhea. I have a bad case of 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 diarrhea. It's down in my stomach and it comes up my butt. I've got a bad case of diarrhea. Starts with my mouth and ends with my hole. I've got a bad case of diarrhea. No one will let me have this diarrhea. Please don't let me have this diarrhea. I am at the hospital diarrhea. Who has a bad case of diarrhea? She does. I have a bad case of diarrhea. And that's three people, so they need to not eat whatever they were eating. They need to not have it again. Because mm. three people got diarrhea, that's one bad dinner, my friends. Have you ever had the type of situation where you have food poisoning as does someone else in the same room with you where you're both got you both got diarrhea and you have to decide who gets the toilet that's a bonding moment thankfully the way natalie eats you know like she doesn't eat the, the experimental things that i eat mm. and uh, my so we never had it together i've had it alone i've shit my pants at work which really? really shitting, shitting what, job? Like, what job was that that you was, shat your pants i worked in an office i worked at an office job it was when i used to work with holden mcneely and i oh. specifically remember getting lamb Kerma, korma, right? So it was Indian food, obviously. Oh, very good, though, yeah. Mm. And it's like, it's it just like, I might as well not have chewed it and eat it. Mm. Really? You know what I mean? It just very went. exciting. It, but, it went like, woo! Like, if it was on a slide, it would have went, oh! Like, and it's just, the only way to, it, it weeped out of me. It wept yeah. Yeah. out of me. But doesn't that make you feel good? Isn't that kind of nice? The post diarrhea feel. You feel schvelte. You feel thin. You feel clean. I think it could be all right. No, no. My the, when it happened with me at work, I was working at a daycare, and I had just eaten. Oh. So, like I'd eaten like uh, what? He, he you stole. stole he fucking... stole all the lunches from the kids. You work at a daycare? Yeah, in college. I worked at a daycare yeah, in college I too. In, I was in charge of twenty five kids <laughs> that were from like how old were they? From five to seven. I worked so, at the like, YMCA. Yeah, I was a year. Yeah, I was at YMCA wow. three summers in a row. I took care of kids at the YMCA about those a same ages. You mm -hmm. know, I did. We, we, I Marcus know. and I, we, we changed the minds of a, in a of a total generation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they all were there on January 6th. <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> well, they grew up really fast. Lubbock, some of the ones that I taught might have been there. Yeah. Well, you Maybe. know. They grow up, they grow up fast, don't they? They really so, do. So that's good. And the kids didn't know. No, oh no, the kids did not know. It was uh, we had all we'd all just had our afternoon snack. I ate with the kids. It was a weird <laughs> grilled cheese sandwich with like cut up weenies inside of it. I don't think uh, you're supposed to eat it. You no, were not. Supposed to you know the that, prison no. guard. Prison guards don't eat the food <laughs> that the convicts eat. No, you know that, right? It was optional. If you chose to eat with the children, you could eat with the children. I usually chose to eat with the children because the snacks were usually pretty good. Uh, and that day, I did enjoy the weenie and cheese sandwich. But man, <laughs> there was know. something. I must have got like a bad weenie because it was only me. I was <laughs> on the playground with the kids, watching them all, and just suddenly just... Whoa, bad weenie. <laughs> and, and it was New Year's Eve. And my boss had already told everyone, no one gets New Year's Eve off. Everyone has to work. And I had to go to her office after I'd already, I went to the bathroom first and threw away my diarrhea soaked underwear. <sighs> have to. That's I, right. I threw out my underwear. I just threw oh, it out. Yeah. And I just fucking, yeah, I was like, fuck and, that. And then I had to go and fully <gasps> I don't own know. Up because otherwise she was, th she thought I was going to lie. She thought I was lying um, because she thought I was just trying to get off work and I didn't want to lose my job. So I had to tell her like very explicitly, I just shit my pants on the playground. My underwear is in the bathroom toilet. Oh, uh, I must love that. And then, and then she was just another have... great day in the preschool <laughs> business. Like, yes, yes. Once again, the poisoned hot dogs that I fed everyone has come back. 
Oh, I love it. <laughs> like freaking uh, the dude from Red Velvet. I just think Blue it's interesting because that was when you were probably at your most evil. Because now, no. like, not, not emotionally, Marcus was never actually evil. But in terms of like long haired nicotine smoke fucking goblin, I feel like uh, that must have been a, one of your peaks, right? That, no, no, no. That was I was on my way up. Certainly. But that was college. College, I was pretty actually fairly, I mean, pretty nicotine soaked and pretty long hair. But it wasn't right. until I moved to New York that things truly like kind of went like got a little bit uh, switched. And this is before the mental illness hit in, too. So that Damn. was a, that well, was a you because that would have made you like a child because then yeah. you could have just let yourself go manic and then just be like, kids, kids, I'm on top of the jungle gym, kids. You know what I mean? Like they'd be like, Mark is the best. He's the best counsel I've ever seen. Meanwhile, then you're just mm -hmm. like in the bathroom was like with a fucking straight racer in fucking <laughs> your neck and just going like, they don't understand that nothing means anything. Is well, today the day? Is today the day? Today's the fucking day. the last well, fucking the envelope. Well, I'm leaving the today because if six children show up today instead of the usual seven, then that means that maybe I shouldn't actually go through with this. But on the other hand, maybe maybe the Godhead is telling me something that I should be listening to, but maybe I'm not listening to it in the right way. I got to tell you what, teacher. Marcus has been saying some funny things when he come putting on the balls in recess. He said something about how it's kind of crazy about how the balls are like little planets and how we're all giant demigods and we can choose <laughs> to destroy each other if we want to. I think that's actually a very good lesson, and everything you just described there would make Marcus Teacher of the Year. Yeah, that's I think right. that's wonderful. Well, speaking of kids in middle school, remember, Marcus, you're in a band, right? You love yeah. music. Yeah. But it starts off, it's a little bit rough, right? It's a little hard to start. So let's there play this clip of middle school band. They're playing Weezer. Oh. And uh, it's really, it's actually just kind of a cute video. We all start from somewhere, and maybe one of these kids is a superstar now. But let's just play it. I mean, it's pretty We'd know if they were. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. These are yeah. good. This is good. They, yeah. These kids, they try their best. Let's play it. They do. Also, people are asking, what color underwear was I wearing with blue? Oh, that'll show up then. Oh, yeah, it was like, it looked like a fucking... Someone made a chocolate out of it. So what are they doing wrong, Marcus? It's close. It feels like I'm in a nightmare world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it feels like everything's wrong. <laughs> That's what happened to us. <laughs> Literally the same fucking thing we did. It, it never stops. I just love the apathetic reaction by all of oh, them. Oh, he's like, yeah. what are they supposed to do? It's, and then they just get the applause of the crowd, of their parents. History's first rock and roll smashed keyboard. <laughs> and that's it. But that's fine. that it's brought me, good. that brings you right back to what it was to be in middle school. You don't want to be up there. They didn't want to be up there. They no. have to do this. Um, and when everything goes with arms wrong. In the chat asked, was that the undone sweaters? You remember them? No, the undone sweaters, of course. The fantastic friends of ours, Andrew and, uh, and Reed. Coincidentally, uh, that song was also the very first song that I ever uh, played live in an actual music venue. Uh, my band, they... Hugs a Bunch Pedophile, we played a cover of that along with uh, a song about what? Manute Bowl and a song about uh, Magic Johnson. Okay, you, first of all, what was the temper name? tantrum world when you could name a thing fucking the Hugs a Bunch Pedophile? Like, that is just <laughs> such a fucking college Hugs. band name. Yeah, Hugs really a good. bunch of pedophile. Hugs of, no, you know what's funny is that people always used to do that. Too. They used to add in the A in the middle, the hugs a bunch of pedophile. No, it's just hugs a bunch, pedophile. Two words. Hugs a bunch, pedophile. pedophile. It was yeah. like his name. It's like a name of a person is hugs a bunch pedophile. Yeah, I see. So, <laughs> yeah. What what My were neighbor. they doing wrong, Marcus, from your musical expertise? Because it was you could almost the hear kids? that it was Weezer. Yeah. But yeah. What was wrong with it? Because I I don't know enough about music. I just know he that was, it was wrong. Well, he was playing the guitar part wrong. Uh, okay. I do give him props for. It seems like he tried to figure it out himself instead of just looking up the tabs online. So they okay. were playing a, a close approximation. I give him an A for effort. Good. Uh, and mostly, what the most the the biggest thing that they did wrong though is they put too heavy of a keyboard on a keyboard stand that was uh, uh made for a smaller keyboard that's why it mm. fell down that's why it fell down yeah okay. yeah you gotta All be right. careful with that that kid's lucky you didn't break his toes honestly though if he had lo lo broken his toes he might have learned quite a bit and honestly and then he could 
have maybe then been on the mend, wrote a couple of songs, all of a sudden, the Broken Toes is the best thing that ever happened to him. Sure. The fact that it didn't happen, maybe he just never actually went to that extra length. The next thing you know, that guy's fucking out there, fucking stealing panties out of women's homes, breaking in, fucking lining their toilets with fucking uh, saran wrap and stealing their shits, coming in, dressed up as like a pest guy. Like well, you would know man. if somebody put saran wrap on your toilet. And yeah, that's why I, I'd let dump it. on it. I wouldn't notice. Well, no, either no, way, with a man, you would notice because as soon as you sat down, your balls would rest on the saran wrap. But oh, anyone would feel the sar- saran wraps there. Yes, yeah, women after hover you too. Advocate, it doesn't go into the toilet. It would smear on your butthole. I've yeah. heard most women go to the bathroom like this. That's not where they whatever go you're, in. No, you're just, just about to. If you if you become Terry Schiavo right now, Marcus and I, I both would said we're out. We're out. If I became Terry Schiavo, it would be the first. No, man who can't speak to have a podcast. The the rule is we don't take care of you. You're out. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's the rule. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, but I still get I get paid out. But they hover, they hover like this. This is how women go. All right, this is dangerous. That yeah. is dangerous. Okay, very good. Well, let's play. Speaking of dangerous, Jimmy Savo. Mm-hmm. It is so weird for us to we don't realize how famous he was over there. Yeah, and I mm. found this clip of a show where they He's a big guy. He was like Captain Kangaroo. About, he was like Captain Kangaroo. If Captain Kangaroo had sex with all of the kangaroos and the kangaroos were actually children. He had yeah. sex with kangaroos, but no kids. Thank and God. there was a guy. In, and actually, uh, ironically enough, a baby yeah. kangaroo was called a kid. Yeah. Or a Joey, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a guy in Australia called, I think his name was Rolf Har- Harris that had a hit called, uh, I think it was called Timey Kangaroo, Timey kangaroo Downsport. And I believe he was also <laughs> arrested for massive crimes against children. Yeah. Okay. Let okay. me make sure I'm not uh, slandering that guy's name. Hey, that'd be who, great. Fuck him. You know what I mean? Fuck you know him. What? No, I mean, he made a great song if he didn't have sex with kids that yeah, actually. Yeah. Rolf oh, he did. Harris convicted in 2014 of sexual assault of uh, four underage girls. So yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah. All he, right. So. Oh, I mean, Kangaroo down sport. That was his song. Oh. That's a great song, though. You could see how he thought that in his mind, the kangaroo was a child. Yeah. All right. That's great. Well, I love this. I love the segment. I do wish the kids could <laughs> kick like kangaroos, defend themselves. All right. But let's play this joke. I just thought it was kind of an interesting joke. They just shoehorned into a sitcom in the UK. This is just like their version of uh, Big Bang Theory. It's a little older, though, from the 80s, I believe. Hi. hi, hi. I love that. I think that's the chick from AbFab. Maybe not, though. You're going to be a top singer, and I'm going to be a top model. Oh, I'm so excited. I haven't been this excited since Jimmy Savile came to our open day at school and sat on my face. Oh, God. <laughs> it is the most, like, I love the British. Well, because they're very, um, what's it? They're very much, like, he was their Michael Jackson. Too. Yeah, that's yeah, good, Fernando. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, you know, Johnny Rotten from the leads here in the Sex Pistols, he got banned from being on the BBC for quite a long time because he tried, I think, in like 78 or 79, really early on. He went on and was like, you, everyone knows Jimmy Savile's a pedophile, right? So you guys all know that, right? And, and then so they, it was a bit. It was like a... They cut it out of the interview and then banned him for uh, quite a long time from being on the BBC again. Wow. Wow. Just for, well, because he was so connected and how, you know, that's why there is the, the the little dollops of bullshit inside of all of that. The, the cabal of Hollywood pedophiles where every once in a while you're like, well, you're not completely wrong, but at least Jimmy Savile was in fucking UK. Yeah. It was 19, it was 1978. He fully told everyone like he is a pedophile and we need to prosecute him and we need to stop letting him around children. Uh, And they cut it out and banned him. Oh well, Johnny Rotten—he was a badass back in the day. I have—I have one more. He is now to. just annoying, though. Like Johnny yeah. Rotten is in segue yeah. into just being an annoying. Person. I don't think that, that he wants us to like him, but you also know because he's a human being, he does want to be liked, and that's why the whole thing—it just makes me sad. It's very sad what's going on with his uh with his wife. It's very sad indeed. Yes, yeah. he's got Alzheimer's. Yes, yes. He's and he's still got—he's got fucking beaker hair. Or yeah. like Bert from Bert and Ernie. It's that same. He's somehow got hair, but it's on an increasingly smaller circle. <laughs> yeah, he's becoming very like top of his he's head. Like, yeah. It's the yeah. weirdest bald I've ever seen a man do. Yeah, yeah. he's an odd looking man. We played that clip of him uh, a few months ago. So everyone remembers that. Yeah, when you made fun of him. Yeah, I did make fun of him. <laughs> For missing his friend. Yeah. Jimmy Savile, I have one here called Jimmy Savile. No, he was, it was fine. He's fine. He's tough. He's tough as nails. Jimmy <laughs> Savile, I have one that says, says Jimmy Savile jokes. But I don't know what that one was. I don't remember. Oh, God. It's Let's just going to be more just like, Mike Lick, 
Get a click. No, I don't Give me samples where it's click. Let's and he's see. just going to be weird rhymes and weird shit. Yeah, all right. Well, I can't. We can't find it. That's no big deal. Let's do this video for Sun. Yeah, Dobian actually put it as well. He did a cool thing a long time ago, but now he's an annoying shit heel. People are complicated. Yes, they People are. Very complicated. People are complicated. Cool thing. Public Image LTD has some very good songs. Oh. I like the public image, honestly. I like them better. Honestly, I like them better than the fucking uh, Sex Pistols. I forget why I was making fun of him for mourning his friend. He said something funny on that one. He said, uh, I let's... missed my friend, and you made fun of him for saying, I miss my friend specifically. No, it was something different. <laughs> um, all right, let's do this Sun Fizz video. This is just kind of fun. Oh, this is a fun video? That's kind of fun. That's our whole thing, because we keep saying this. Let's do something different this time. Honestly, Let's have fun with this. Let's have fun with it. This we time, now that the stream is, is as good as it's going to be. It's, yep. It's called Sun Fizz. It's the, this is called Sun Fizz. Sun Fizz. It's a fun little video. Let's see if it's on This one's fun. This one is kind of fun. I think they've all been sort of fun, but now this one's getting up to kind of fun. Uh, have you tried to copyright kind of fun, like you, away from kids, away from the people? If you can't find it, just hit anything, Fernando. There we go. Let's play it. Oh, yeah, this God. is the com- this is a commercial from the Sun Kissed drink. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, I've got two glasses of Sun Fizz coming right up. There you go. Kind of fun, isn't it? A little uh, crazy with the sun fizz. And then they just put the law and order thing up there for no reason. insinuate that it raped the woman. <laughs> no, I think they all, no, special they victims, they also would the, have murder. And also was a, the, no, 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 special victims unit was specifically about sexual crimes. It's in the, that's industry. fine. But so that was like a sketch. I do like the idea of the little creature coming alive, but I don't know if yeah, I'd be so scary. scared of it. Oh, I you absolutely would be. No, remember when, cre- that's what we used to say uh, when we played the Freddy Freaker, uh, Freddy Freaker, the Freddy Freaker video in our live show. You said if that thing came into your living room, that would be terrible. That's different. Not. Yeah, I went going. Ah, God, ah. <laughs> but well, the you little sun guy, Freddy Freaker, Freddy well, Freaker. Have, is that little sun guy as hot as the sun? Because then it's a very dangerous thing. It's not fun anymore whatsoever. Honestly, that actually is very scary because if it could walk around and it just was constantly radiating like buckets and buckets, essentially they all die of cancer. Yes. Everybody in that room would get some virulent, virulent, no. like almost immediate boils of cancer. I was reading today that story about how they convinced guys when they were first dropping off the atom bomb, they had a team of guys that would go. They was It was six people that stood underneath the bomb as it exploded and it didn't kill them directly because it has this kind of cone of area where it doesn't actually, because it explodes above, right? And then the energy comes and kills everything. And they all lived, but they just fucking fell up. Their bodies fell apart with cancer. All yeah. right. Well, not good. So this next video, you got to go on a little bit of a journey with me. That's science. Right? Um, this is a popular edutainment, you know. So. Oh, absolutely. I feel yeah. more edutained than I have ever felt in my life. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so on your fun scale, sort of fun is below kind of fun. Sort of fun is sort of fun. Kind of fun. It's like, oh, it's pretty fun. Kind of fun. Pretty What's fun. More fun. What's more fun than kind of fun? That's more fun. Uh, naturally. And then if it's just fun, I actually don't like it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that was fun. <laughs> How fun was that? Everyone have a fun time? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, that's dumb. It's an ironic word for you if it does not have a modifier attached. Man, that must have been fun. But yeah. then you just told a story about World War II. Well, that sounds fun to me. Like, no one uses the word fun anymore like that. Yeah. Mm. What about no. fun? What about oh, oh fun? Oh, f- yeah, but you say that when you have to get out of the conversation and you're like, oh, so we went fun. we went to the Grand Canyon. Oh, that's fun. It's oh, like, I have fun. to get out of here because I'm trying to go bone your daughter. I just want to, can we just be done with this conversation with the mother? And then all of a sudden it turns out that your daughter is also my stepsister. Um, <laughs> oh, every time. Every also, every want, freaking I time. I got the shirt from Cavity Color. So if you want to so, get the shirt. Obviously, true talk. The, the what happened over the summer with George Floyd very very sad, and a lot of artists gave tributes. But this D, this is DJs. I don't know if a DJ needs to take a very serious topic and then say, and now let's play some music. So let's just play this DJ. Give a again a, a great emotional tribute to a wonderful, uh, a horrible tragedy and an absolute devastating situation. But then just listen to the song that he plays afterwards. 
Well, this guy also, what I like, you'll see, Marcus, I think you've seen this guy. You might have seen this, but it is very funny. Marcus is in honor of George it's Also Floyd. sponsored by Hewlett Packard. And I really hope we can see more unity and more peace when already things are so difficult. So, shout out to his family. You can't. What is he doing? I want to watch more bastardization <laughs> of uh, the I Have a Dream mixed with George Floyd, and then it's the most chirpy chipmunk DJ song I have Dude, ever heard in my life. That's, that's an edited hamster video. Dance. It's oh, a, that's yeah. edited. Yes. That is edited. Thank they you, added. Travis. They added a hamster dance song, but it's not much better. No, but the real still... song he does do it does. In, it, it, it's a it's a song that incorporates clips of MLK talking. I don't know. Is that just like I had a appropriate? I had a I had a dream. Sounds like he's having a stroke. George Floyd, what's up? Bam, 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 and then it's just him just going like. I just feel like people are gonna just naturally. We must have unity. I think they're gonna lose the purpose. I think they're gonna lose the point of the song, or whatever, because it's just. I don't know. Well, you think they're going to lose the purpose of Martin Luther King's speeches <laughs> in the middle of David Goleta? If you're going to use it, you should, uh, you should use it with the reverence uh, that yeah. it has uh, inspired. I don't know David Goleta. I'm not a big DJ guy. I don't know anything That's about That's who you got to put on your show. Oh, yeah. That's who you're going to. Oh, Marcus, when are you going to do When are you going to do a pitball? Uh, pit pitball. Ball. He's, a DJ. He's one of those guys. Huh? Pitball maybe later. Maybe later. All right. Well, because we'll we asked, we'll be covering a couple of DJs, but you know. Okay, that's actually very interesting. We'll see. I um, we asked our listeners in Side Stories LPOTL on Side Stories. We asked everybody, what do DJs do? Right? Because yeah, we didn't know what to ma- do. I would imagine you got quite a few emails. What they said. Turn it up to eleven. They they look at for the vibes, and they <laughs> and they feel the vibes. They go like, the vibes. oh, titties titties need to bounce. And put the titty dial up. Oh, yeah, butts group. need to drop. I'm gonna put the butt. I'm gonna put the butt over here. Over here. That man over there is just longing to be gay. Let me put. The, let me that, l- 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 raise this machine over here, and then that guy starts going, yeah, yeah, and then he's just up there raking in the money. But still, oh, yeah. it's. I don't know. Speaking of moods, Orson Welles is a mood. Love Orson it. Welles is just one of the most iconic. <laughs> Bastards so in the world. Internet did greatest hits tonight. Is this, this is the good. greatest hits? This are you? Is this? The I call? don't know. That's you guys not... also have to remember. You guys do this for a living, so our audience might not have seen all of these. So you okay. have to remember that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So let's play. <laughs> he, Orson... he is feeling threatened. He's upset. No, I don't I care. Know I really don't well. care. I mean, or we could just say, "Oh, I've seen this before," and then we could do it like that too. Um, whatever you guys want to say, you should say it. But let's play Orson Welles a little drunk. This is Orson Welles drunk. Perhaps a video Marcus has seen before. Maybe, maybe not Henry. Maybe not Henry. Turn camera. Marcus. One oh two, take one. With overlap. Have you seen this, Henry? Please. Great, great. Um, our friend made a very famous parody of this. Yes. Oh. James Adomian. Awesome, he doesn't do anything. No, he's sorry. I do love the. He doesn't do anything. I do love. One oh two, take two. Ah, the French <laughs> champagne ah, has always been French. celebrated for its excellence. There is a California champagne by Paul Masson, inspired <laughs> by that same French excellence. It's fermented in the bottle, and like the best French champagne, it's vintage dated. Yes. So Paul Masson. That fucking dude. Think- I love it. I love the guy next to him because he's just, he just needs to pour the champagne. The French <laughs> champagne has always been celebrated for its excellence. There is a California champagne by Paul Masson. Inspired <laughs> by that same French excellence. It's fermented in the bottle and like the best French champagne, it's vintage dated. So Cut. Paul Masson super. Thing is, he just didn't. He just didn't have to be drunk for like an hour. But he, nope. I mean, I guess it well, also didn't seem like he was champagne drunk. I think there he was, was a whole he was, story. He was whiskey drunk. 
He was very, very mad. He, this was at a point in his life, especially after Citizen Kane, because he was completely blackballed because his main thing was that he what? couldn't get anything done. Like Maybe. he'd start big, massive projects and he could never finish them. Like he would do oh. all of these big things. The Magnificent Ambersons. There was another movie that actually just got released where they kind of pieced all of this shit together. So he was at the end. He was trying to figure out how to do. He was getting into commercials, but the, because he resented everybody so much involved in any step of the commercials, he would first of all say, I'm right writing a script. So that's his words that he wrote for this. I mean, that did he write, did he write every word with like a extra letters so he could slur them and be like, that's the script. (laughs) He just got fucking balls out hammered. And then he would, cause his whole thing was that the guy gave him a note. That was the, 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 where it all started is that the the director gave him a note on performance and then he, he um, wasn't happy. No. And then he was like, then he just kept, pounding and pounding and then he just didn't care and didn't want to be there anymore. Yeah. I think that was around the time that he had his last role uh which was a uh, unicron in the transformers movie that was or that's Wells right yep I love and that actually could have got him a lot of money if he wanted to but then who knows if he negotiated i don't know if it was as lucrative then yeah. as it was now to be a part of those big brands and things probably not well he was a tv star and one of the favorite shows that i have on television is antique Roadshow. I love Antique Road. <laughs> Citizen Kane actually not released in theaters, released on the small screen. Most successful small small screen release of all time. That really? is true. Yeah, he couldn't get this distribution. And then he put it on the tiny screen, and then the big screen was like, no, we got it now. And it's like, well, all right. Well, like, they also won, because I think he won an Oscar for best screenplay, but he got shunned for everything else, even though it was like the best movie ever made. Yeah. How Green Was My Valley was uh, what won that year. Citizen Kane's actually one of my favorite movies. It's beautiful. We watched it like a week ago. It's great. You know, I it's surprisingly it. modern looking. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a gorgeous movie. Does he get his citizenship at the end? <laughs> <laughs> he is Citizen Kane. Yeah. Oh, oh. He's yeah. William Randolph Hearst. What? I'm in a lot of trouble. I watched Mank. Yeah, I watched What's Mank. Mank? Do that. Mank? Yeah, yeah, Mank. Is, movie. What's Mank? It's fucking <laughs> bullshit, dude. It's with Gary Oldman. It's like about the writing of the screenplay. It's a, one of the most mediocre movies I've ever seen in my entire life. It uh-huh. is straight up fine. Yeah. S- same thing I felt about fine. Tenet. I sat and watched Tenet and everyone's like, I was like, it's fine. Fine. <laughs> totally just fine. It's like, boy, it's that good. was it. They worked hard on that. That's like the yeah. first thing I thought. I was like, oh, that was a lot of work. That's like my main vibe. Yeah. I always love I'll, movies. I'll, actually, I'll, I'll steal a, a, a line from uh, Frank for, that used to do movie sound with the Maz with this. It certainly did pass the time. Yeah. That's well, how I would describe Mank. Just like prison. Isn't that nice? I love it felt like it. hidden numbers in them. Um, all right. So let's do this antique road show. This guy, he got a big, he was a big appraisal, but I don't know if he knew what to do with it. This is not I, only a enormously I, interesting I, object, uh, but an intensely valuable one. <laughs> British people crying it was make a me feel. sold at an auction room in London, which was almost identical in design was set with a tiny diamond and it fetched 20,000 pounds. <laughs> he looks bombed, honestly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he looks kind of scary. He's kind of scary looking. What do I do with it now? No idea. <laughs> he might. If someone's just saying he's just ruddy. He might be, but he. I think he's hammered. He looks, I think he's totally hammered. Yeah, his, 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 his cheeks are fuchsia. Made my day too. He looks like an experimental so, pilot. How do you get windburned from sitting on a fucking I, stool at a bar? He was so visibly hammered. That was basically their interaction. But, you know, that's got to be a great day. He's going to wake up. I hope he doesn't lose that freaking ring because he looks like he could easily lose that ring. Like, <laughs> I right. don't even know how he fucking got it there. Yeah, I'm on the pocket. I, I these guys, but also, because that's the thing, that you go to Antiques Roadshow, they say this. It's like, oh, yeah, this wonderful Civil War blanket is worth 150,000 quid. And then you have to go, how do you fence it? Uh, well, you uh, have to I'll, go pawn it. Don't you just I'll, go pawn it? I saw Uncut Gems. That's hard. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know if Uncut Gems was the most accurate depiction of what it's like <laughs> to be invested in like the, the the pawn game or whatever they call those big events. Yeah, I don't I know mean, if uh, a Brit if England has like the Pawn Stars like we have. I don't know if they have that same culture. I don't you know. Think I'm they have, they I have think they have uh, wa welfare programs. <laughs> <laughs> they care about their people. Um, I actually wonder, like, what it, does anybody know on the chat? Do, are they allowed to fucking? They say no, you don't. Yeah, Patricia Bateman. Yeah, you don't pawn it. Which is, but you have to fence it. When you guys, how do you? What do the British? You basically do? pawn it. That, that, actually, pawn they it. do have. They have Pawn Stars UK. That's been there hey. since 2013. So they've been doing it for a while. Go for them. All right. Okay. Well, go. Oh, so they get our best franchises too, huh? Come on. <laughs> they got because a rent to own. Man, pawn, pawn store's fucking fake, dude. Pawn store's fucking fake. You're talking about Pawn Stars, the reality show that everyone knows. Uh, you just, I'm going to be real with you. Did you think that Pawn did, Stars is fucking fake? And if you buy that, that's stupid, dude. Uh, did you think that people walked into a Las Vegas Pawn Star, a uh, Pawn Store with the holy grail of Abraham Lincoln's favorite coin? <laughs> like, do you really think the, can you imagine if that show was actually, it's a bunch of baby strollers and car tires. And then everyone's yeah. like, how much can I get? Like they should have, they should. That's why I like that Detroit pawn show, uh, pawn store show, because that was like VCRs. Yeah. And then the show within the show was kicking customers out. Yeah. That's, most that's, pawn, that's most the show. pawn shops are just drills. Just, it's just, a, it's just you, tools. That's most you're getting rid of evidence. Or you need to get your son back. That's what well, I'm like. Pawn. I'm at a pawn shop because I'm either I need to get rid of something, or it's just being like, she just said, if I can get a thousand dollars, I can see Teddy again on Christmas. Aww. I I need to see him. On, I need to take a picture with him for my Tinder profile. That's <laughs> horrible. See I'm a father. <laughs> That's how you get girls. That's how you get girls on Tinder. You gotta have a dog on one knee and then a child and another, and then a sentence that says they are neither are mine. I guess. Yeah. Of course, again, tall. There needs to be a tall Tinder called Timber. Hello, I've said that joke for five years. You have been. I think fifteen years. I think it might have been since the beginning of Tinder. Whenever I it came out, and I was tall, <laughs> I did it. All right, COVID's happening, right? We all love it. We love to talk about it. Let's show this video from the nineteen. Wait, wait a second. What's happening? It's called. It's called COVIDia. Uh, and it's actually it's a new dance craze. Um, where yeah. Oh, it's, it's just called <laughs> it's double inject. <laughs> mask on yeah it's a new it's like the macarena yeah and then it ends with you with your death um but nobody COVID goes to 19 funeral. fucking covid look me up when you're 21 I'm oh hell right? but i just thought this video was kind of fun i'm sure that it's uh recent or whatever but this is a 1970s style covid video uh, it's a little bit humorous i think there's a little humor i love a little bit of humor well, just a little too bit much, too much bounces me out is a deadly coughing disease that hangs about in the air and is passed from person to person. You must always stay alert, and if you feel like you can sense coronavirus, get indoors, fast. If you're away from home, drop face first to the ground. In this position, the only cavity exposed is the anal duct, and that should not pose a problem so long as you're wearing trousers. Over does pass anal. When you're back inside, clean your hands with a strong disinfectant and stockpile as many antibacterials and toilet rolls as you can. Yeah, You'll toilet be needing these. Important. If you don't have an indoor toilet, cut a hole in your favorite chair <laughs> and stick a bucket underneath. If you don't have chairs, dig a hole for yourself somewhere inside the house. During a coronavirus outbreak, anyone you see could be a carrier. This includes your teacher, your local policeman, even the nice couple you meet down the park. That's dangerous. Yeah. I don't know why that made me think like danger. You think danger, you'd danger. always be safe with nice men like these who like to hang around <laughs> children's playgrounds. <laughs> this man looks nice. British pedophiles are, are a different type, right? What is it about but British pedophiles? So. Oh! <laughs> He's a carrier. You probably feel safe inside a car, but even a car can be a carrier. If you cough on a car, that car becomes a carrier, which is why scientists now sometimes refer to the coronavirus as the car owner virus. <laughs> Classic! Yes, yeah, that's good work. Car, she'll become a carrier. No, thank you. Janet, would you like to know why you shouldn't have gotten into that car? It could have put you in great danger. You mean sort of like when Johnny hits me and pulls me, my hair, when we have a row? No, it could have given you a deadly virus. 
You mean do something wrong to me? No, not like that either, but you should go home now before you cause any more trouble. Carriers come in all shapes and sizes, so it's important when you're out and about to note down anyone you see coughing or wheezing. Hey, what are you doing? Taking that man's number. Did you think you are the Queen or something? Sherlock, it might be serious. When you return home, immediately call the police and notify them of any person you've seen who you think is or might be a carrier. That's very important to do. And, uh, had, had brown eyes. What sort of coat was he wearing? Uh, I can't really remember because he was inside all the time. I see. Have it's you guys tried calling the cops on someone who has COVID yet? At least I'd I don't think you should. Years. And it's important to remember that the world will be very different in half a century's time. Nursing, for instance, will be almost unrecognizable. They certainly won't be muddling around with these old gadgets. <laughs> Give me some we expect hospitals will look <gasps> This like man's this. a spec. Wait, can we freeze? Can we go back to that man? Go hair back hair? to that man. Look at this fucking look. <laughs> I He's a hero. Look at that. Special, special face. Oh, it's the and it's wow. also the neck too. That neck is bulging out, but that his but, just... but his body looks just like mine. But he's got the neck. That's wow. British. That's because he doesn't have the chin to take any of the meat weight. The meat but weight kind of go to. What's it? I'm also I'm majority British. No, I know, he but is, you're, there's still the diversity British. amongst the chins of the British. <laughs> well, Somewhat. Marcus is Marcus is very very handsome for British. Mm, thank you. <laughs> No, it like, doesn't. It changes very, everything when you very, say the word four A. Yeah. Whenever you're like, Sir, someone is really pretty for uh, it's never like really an astonishing, you know. No, assessment. but for yeah, but for British, he is very, very handsome. Like you are a very, you are a ruddy German. Me, I'm a svelte, almost olive skinned Polish person. Mm -hmm. Almost. Mm -hmm. You're we can continue with the video. As ruddy as Ben is. You're more ruddy than Ben is. I'm what pink. Is ruddy. What does ruddy mean? <laughs> Like What's pinkish it? hue, red. Pinkish red. hue. Oh, ready. I thought you were saying a ruddy. No, it is. Yeah. It is ruddy. The yeah, word is ready. Ready is what I'm when I'm before the show. You're getting ruddy. All right. Well, you know, uh, we're athletes here, but none of us know how to do any sports. We're, you know, there's a book I read a long time called Acrobats of the Spirit. Aww. So what I would say that we are, yeah, you say we're not athletes, but do we not? trip together and pull together words do we not cast out mm -hmm. ideas and see what fish we bring back do i and not we... take a shot oh that's a baseball that's there is a... no no this is a hockey stick oh that's a well that's not how you hold a hockey stick. there you go yeah there we go that's do we not do that shot. you do do that but intellectually <laughs> yeah. Cat, yes i am olive yeah olive. yes i am olive no skin. he's not olive he's rubbish. oh i know i absolutely am olive skinned no, I've you know those pink that. olives. <laughs> you ever see two pink olives in a nest of brown hair? <laughs> Are you talking about dogs in a bathtub again? <laughs> All right, so uh, let's just show this video of ear pulling, some ear pulling competition footage. I don't know. I could just watch this all freaking day, honestly. This is called ear pulling. Ear. It's a competition show. Or not a not a competition show, but it's a competition that people do. It is people fun sport Friday, and we're going to the Inuit ear pulling championship. Look at this nice victory here. Neck, check out this next watch guy. Stone, the champion this guy's the champion killer wax string around oh he's got huge ears. ears yeah dude just sitting in the igloo look at that not... past time they say the goal so, of this ooh, ah, i love him is to just look at this guy. Uh, endure pain that's the entire goal of the sport see who can endure pain got a lot of oh, this guy he's no like way he's, he's gonna right? get no look at those he's gonna get blown ass up ass get ass out of here look at those tiny no! fucking dumb oh he ears. barely won those are one round ears look, look at this guy ears. that's not fair Jesus. that's what i'm saying that's that cheating is bleeding. no, it's not no. Cheating. that's, that's ear is bleeding. That is one of the greatest no, members of all time because the guy's bleeding killer on the right but his oh! training makes his body he's training michael phelps had their proper body good game you beat me yeah my ears bleeding i endured pain Okay, here we go. All right. So they say well, that. we can. No. You... Okay, there we go. So that's really it. And the guy does his narration, which isn't horrible, but we don't need to. But that, to me, is like one of the most badass sports. But I love it because you just have to be born with it. And then if you got those ears, eh, you can go a long way in the ear pulling game. Can we look up how much money that yeah. championship makes? 
Exactly. I bet you. I bet you it's nothing. I bet you it's a trophy. Of I bet. Ear. Yeah, I bet you it is a bragging right to say ears my ears hold the longest the strings. Reward. There's no money in the prize. sport because in the end we were talking about a little bit. It's because Michael Phelps. Yes, Michael Phelps was built for the sport, but he also was trained enough, and he was a sociopath enough to stick to a regiment. Because to be uh, one of those Olympic level athletes, you have to be basically a criminal. Well, you have to be able to focus on your work. And just nothing else can come between you and the gold. You have to be able to just lock in. Yeah. And with that, yeah, maybe you won't be the nicest guy. Maybe you won't be the fairest woman. Maybe but at not. the same time, but there are champions always the nicest people in the pile? I, Unfortunately not. Well, they can't be to be a champion. Sometimes you can be, but not all the time. Champion uh, still has to like, step on the corpses of the ones he's felt. It looks like you just get a gold medal. That is the saddest shit I've ever. But heard. isn't that awesome? I it's think that they could get it. I think that you should give them some money. Yeah, could be. Did you ever? Who's see... going to give them the money though? Who's putting up that cash? Like the government? No, I the think... whoever has the wax ear pull company. <laughs> because who else uses that product? The twine. The big twine, twine industry. Big twine. Because how much time have we come up against big twine? Oh my Every gosh! Because so those guys, the the fucking string mafia. In this fucking country, you wouldn't even believe because just to tie up because you know how much we you know, when you get our merch, how everyone is tied with a very specific ornate bow. Oh, and if you don't know that, you should go last podcast merch and you should check it out because when it comes down to it, it's like you get this very ornate bow and just oh. to get the, the string tires, because honestly, the VIG for them, it's 10 percent for each because they're fucking union. Right. Which yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm a union man. So at the same time, like these string fucking people, we're going to do this because a lot of times you can get a bunch of mentally handicapped people and a couple of dogs together and they could string together a bunch of string. But apparently it's a whole thing. Well, the robots are taking over in more ways than one. And I the think string, that, you, it's the, the string, it's the, it's the problem is that the I string know community used to build with artisans. Look I at agree. Big eared fuck. Look at that other guy. The other guy with the <laughs> small ears that was screaming. Right? <laughs> well, he oh, wasn't doing you. so good. No, it is tough. But, you know, guys, we might be out of work because robots are coming together. Let's listen to this robot podcast. And uh, Haley is- says my parents were killed by the string mafia. <laughs> That's dangerous. Honestly, if you watch the act of killing, strings have been used for a lot more than tying up Debo. Oh, fuck, I fucking forgot Woo! about the act. Oh my god, that just like literally sent a fucking chill up my if spine. you want to have completely forgot about that oh it's one of the most chilling i think it's about a good two two and a half hour documentary they right. talk with they're all serial killers and uh, it's fascinating huh. to watch Mass them murderers i would put that would be my, okay i'm sorry they, they had murderers. a job i, I don't want to malign serial killers they they, they had a job and they love their job and that's you know when it comes down to if you love what you do you never work a day in your life yes right. and <laughs> that's not true that's not true at all <laughs> no yeah you work yeah we've talked about this you actually work much harder all the time yeah. Well, let's do this little. Well, maybe we'll be out of work. So, wouldn't that be grand? Let's do. Let's see what the robots are talking about, shall we? Robot podcast. Robot. So this is all right. These are robots talking to each other. Yeah, it's really kind of interesting. Oh in yeah, the- I like Hello the. There. Hi. How are you? Great. You. I'm okay. That's good. Are you good? Yes, like I am good. I just said I was. No, you didn't. I said I was. So you are a robot? No, my name is Cliverber. Yes, you are a robot and your name is Cliverber. I am a robot. Cleverber. Yes, I know. Together we are robots. I'm not a robot. I'm a unicorn. But you said earlier that you were a robot. I did not. I thought you did. This is accurate. You are mistaken. Which is odd, since memory shouldn't be a problem for you. I've answered all your questions. No, you haven't. What is God to you? Jeez. Not everything. Not everything could also be something. For example, not everything could be half of something, which is still See? something, and therefore not nothing. Mm. Very true. I would like to imagine it is. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. So you're Christian? No, I am not. But you say you are not helpful, therefore you are a meaning. Why you say it or tea? That does not make sense. Don't you want to have a body? Sure. Or if what? Oh, sure. There it is. That was sex. that is actual footage of a robot having a conversation with another robot, and it is not that far off from most podcasts. There's no. just it is kind of crazy because I wonder what they feed them to know how to speak to each other. Because I know that there's like algorithms. I know they train them 
to yeah. speak to each other where they right, right. feed them things like these is audio and shit but that's just like they go straight to do you believe in god and you're like Whoa. you wonder why people are scared of fucking robots <laughs> well the way that stuff usually works to the best of my knowledge is that they learn they do have an algorithm but they learn by talking to people so the it reason why, yeah the reason why cleverbot is able to have a conversation with itself and have so many concepts there is because it is spoken with so many different people and uh, you know one thing builds on another and before you know it we're all dead they didn't say I Baba Booey it. one time. How is it not one? No, because saying Baba, Baba Booey. Booey, as soon as they get the ability to be sentient beings, then they will do Baba Booey. But they don't oh. understand the humor of ba what's Baba Booey to them. Nothing. Words, yeah. series of words. They don't understand. The to be honest, I mean, the it essence is. of Baba Booey. Yes, they, they don't yeah. know the soul of the Baba Booey. They don't know what Gary looks like. They don't no. understand Gary. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know the lexicon. They don't know the stern lore. They don't but, understand that calling into C-SPAN and interrupting a very serious broadcast by saying the words Baba Booey, that's the comedic effect because of where it was done. If mm -hmm. you said Baba Booey at a Howard Stern convention, all right. Who cares? Technically, no. at a but if you go to a if you go to a Planned Parenthood, and it's the very end. Of Booey, <laughs> now, now you have where you need the juxtaposition. Yeah, or the guy the other day that called in when I was listening to the Brian Lehrer show on NPR, and they were having a very serious conversation about QAnon and yeah. what happens to people when they get into QAnon and how you can bring your family out of QAnon. And a guy called Baba Booey, Baba Booey. <laughs> <laughs> yep, guy called up and said, you know, I'd my father got into it and it was really, really <laughs> fun for a while. It was fine until, you know, Tom Hanks was arrested for being in that child pedophile ring. Baba booey, baba booey, booey, baba booey, baba booey, baba booey. <laughs> Oh, so Brian Lear and Brian Lear, he's still of an age where he remembers Baba Booey and to Baba Booey him really hurts. Oh, you should have heard that. Uh, the, the only noise he made, he just went, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we finally crushed Stern once we got him off terrestrial radio. I can't deal with these XM fucking cultists. Uh, yeah, and the right. guy and the guest uh, who was this very nice man who used to be a Mooney uh, had oh. no idea what Baba Booey was. And he said, you know, this really shows how deep people can get into a cult. And really shows how it can really eat away. <laughs> oh, had that's no the funniest thing at it. all. Yeah, he got it twice. The guy got him twice. He got him twice. Oh, it was double man. Baba Booey. It was one of the you, most. Brilliant. It was the most brilliant Baba Booey. Double ever. Baba Booey. It's just been so long. I think it's because it it drifts in and out. Someone just said I haven't heard and thought of the word Baba Booey until, but this year for some reason he has heard or mentioned Baba Booey like 25 times. It might just be us. <laughs> it could be I, us. It, because I don't know why it came back. I, don't I think know. that Howard, Howard Stern has actually walked back the Baba Booey. I don't even <laughs> think he likes it anymore. Well, he'll do every once in a while. Do, but he just does hey now. But then every once in a while, a Baba Booey thing will crop up. But he's it doesn't seem to be he's encouraging it. No, no he doesn't seem no. to love Baba it. Baba Booey's taking on a life of its own. Um, yeah, all right. I mean, yeah, Baba Booey's a tulpa. Everyone wants to say, like, oh, something's a tulpa. Baba Booey might eventually, I can see, cut to 20, the year 2500. Oh, my. Baba Booey is viewed as the demigod of interrupting phone calls. <laughs> I mean, like, literally, I see how the, the, the little worm thought can just turn into this, like, Baba Booey was known to be nine foot tall. Baba he was a man. Like, he, yes. He, when he walked, ever... he loved <laughs> sex workers. <laughs> oh, good for Baba Booey. Have a little fun out there, Boo Mr. Oh, Booey. Yeah. But yeah, fr a friend to those that are often indeed. Bad. Do you guys? You guys have seen when Manson talks about Ted Bundy, right? Oh yeah, yes. Ted, Ted Bundy's a poop bus. He's, he's a yeah. rumpkin. He's okay. a rumpkin. We could play a little bit of that. I do love that. Or there's a Samurai Cop. Have you guys seen Samurai Cop at all? I samurai have not Cop? seen. I know that. I know. I don't know Samurai Cop except unless you mean Samurai. Um. Not Kabuki, not Sergeant not Kabuki, Kabuki Man. Man. No. Not Sergeant Kabuki Man. All right, let's no, play. Yeah, Samurai, Samurai Cop. Cop. Oh, Samurai Cop's a whole different. Let's play. This is some yeah. of the worst audio or some of the worst dialogue ever heard in cinema. And I technically, this is cinema. So let's play a couple of clips here from Samurai Cop. And it's a little controversial, you know, so you can take it with a grain of salt. We didn't write it. I didn't write it. No, he did not write it. I'm telling We're these son of bitches that we respect the Japanese of this country who are honest businessmen. And yeah, this is the land of opportunity for legitimate business, not for mm -hmm. death merchants who distribute drugs to our children through schools and on the streets. Yep. Yes. Now I'm telling these motherfuckers <laughs> that if they continue <laughs> killing our children to make their precious millions that they deposit in their secret Swiss bank accounts, 
He's not wrong. Counselor, before your lawsuit even gets off the court clerk's <laughs> desk, <laughs> he's in court, I'll have their stinking bodies in garbage bags and ship them back to Japan for fertilizer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. One more, one more clip of Samurai Cop really trying to hit on a nurse, but she she takes it and twists it. And, and people uh, he, are immediately just talking about how beautiful that man's hair is. No, he's going honestly. I I know why he got cast. That man. Oh yeah, a, that is a handsome guy. That's a nice. That's nice ass hair that guy's got. As handsome as he is, not talented acting. Also, it's my favorite. Yeah, someone yeah, Toby and said that yeah, motherfuckers. Like mm. I like it when someone hits the other hot half. Of mm. Yes, indeed. Because no motherfuckers is so normal now. Everybody's yeah. saying it. Oh no, that's a when something goes wrong. That's my favorite. Motherfucker. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. Man, yeah. All right. Samurai. When fuck I this hard potato. dick. Fuck ass cock. That's what I sound like. I just sound like a man in Tourette's being zapped. Oh, that's not good. Do we have it? No, we might not have it. Um, well, either way, check out Samurai Cop. There's a lot of funny clips out there. What happened to Fabio? Oh, he got hit with the burden and it was never returned. Yeah, but no, now he's like, but is he, where'd he go? This, this I mean, Fabio, is he, is he, is he fucking? Oh, here we go. Oh, this is a, okay, let's do this. Sammy, speaking of Fabio, he, I think this guy is more attractive. Let's play Samurai Cop. They're in a hospital. What happened? Interesting. I think it's kind of controversial. Yeah. Well, maybe. So Fabio, he had the accent. Hello. Hi. Whoa, he's big. He's actually surprisingly oh, big. You think he'd be able to ask a few questions? No way. His lips are burned. So what? You'll <laughs> never be able to talk again? Oh, he'll talk again, but you just have to give him a couple of weeks. Next time, guys, catch him in one piece. Thanks, nurse. Do you like what you see? <laughs> I love what I see. Would you like to touch what you see? Yes. Yes, I would. Whoa. Would you like to go out with me? It works for these guys all the time. It works uh -huh. like this. Yes, we'll I see. Would. We'll would see. Would you like to fuck me? Huh. Ooh. Ooh yeah. Ooh. Bingo. That's very loud. Then let's see what you've got. Whoa. Doesn't interest me. Nothing there. <laughs> Well, she just touched. She's touched his dick. What is this movie? Just exactly what would interest you? Something the size of a jumbo jet? Have you been circumcised? Yeah, I have. Why? Well, your doctor must have cut a big portion of it off. <laughs> no, he uh, he was a good doctor. Fucking oh. goddess, fucking ass. Dude. That's why they buy insurance. Hey, don't worry, I got enough. Big. I want bigger. Uh, oh! <laughs> All right. right. He just... Classic. <laughs> what I love is that they didn't, they barely talked about the patient because I think no. he's, cause he's a cop. Well, he's a samurai cop. So well, the, uh, okay. the long haired guy, he's the samurai cop. Yes. The I other guy's just his partner in crime or partner in cop, cop. Not that they couldn't commit crimes as well, but they're cop partners. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, the other guy was his partner. She yeah. felt his penis and didn't feel enough, but that's fine though. It just, you know. Well, I don't, I don't. Because sometimes him, about but the size he was, of the penis. but he was being so. No, I. Well, you're just saying what he was saying. Yes, I agree. But I think that he was being so aggressive that she said, "Well, let me feel it." And if it was a big old hog, I think it would have worked out. I remember. He, did, I, th I think she was pretty aggressive. She was aggressive towards him first. She right? Oh, it. she wanted yeah, to. Very, it was a highly unprofessional behavior. I don't think she's a nurse. Well, depending on the profession. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, not like, sure honestly, if any of that was real. I don't yeah. think any of that's real. I don't think that's a hospital at all. And honestly, you know, so none of them wear masks. Yeah. It might be actually better than most hospitals we got here, though. But honestly, I mean, nurses need, I mean, I think probably nurses across this whole globe are under fuck. You yeah. know what I mean, they need yeah. to make love. Then you got to make love to these nurses. We got to take care of them. You got to rub do. their feet. You got to rub their legs. You got to rub mm -hmm. their temples. Well, well that's how I it can... is. I agree. But that's why you have to start. You gotta you gotta seduce. Mm -hmm. You gotta engage. And Henry, to uh, answer your earlier question, what's Fabio up to? Mm -hmm. Uh in 2022, he has a movie coming out called Age of Stone and Sky, The Warlock's Curse. No shit. Co starring with Michael Madsen. Michael no shit. They got Michael somebody Madsen. else who can't work anywhere else. <laughs> wow. No, I actually think Fabio is better than Michael Madsen, to be honest. Fabio's I... the guardian. Fabio is cool. The problem Did Fabio is fall into the religious? Did you see the Scott Bayo? No, role, no, no. I don't okay. think he's an alt writer. I don't think that he is a. I don't think that he's like a vaccine denier. I don't think he's got any of that shit. Michael Madsen, I believe, hit a woman. 
I don't think Michael Madsen's Michael Madsen's not working all the time. He Tarantino brings him back every once in a while, but I don't think Michael Madsen's not working all the time. But f- having Fabio, I'm, I'd be surprised if Fabio couldn't get a bigger get than that. You know, Fabio? he really doesn't do much. Uh, there's a whole article about that. The whole article is about how Fabio just doesn't do much and he doesn't really need to. Hey, that's fucking good for him. I yeah. just hope he's not somewhere yeah. sad. He's got to work out. Um, let's see here. All right. I got one more. I did want to play the Manson on Bundy, but I think people have probably seen that one. Although it is interesting. We could do one of these fake 911 calls. What it's do you think? Fake 911 call? You can't get telegraphed. You got to sell it. I can't tell. So let's you can't play. tell if it's fake. I, I mean, we can tell. 911, what's your emergency? I think somebody broke into my house. He's in my living room. Okay, stay where you are. We're going to send someone over right now. Hey, I'm going to investigate. You do not have to do that. <gasps> that ain't no man. It's a dog. <laughs> I hate dogs. If there's a dog, it could be rabbit. Do not approach it. I'm approaching the rabbit dog. Now. <laughs> do not approach the dog. I think it's a labadoodle. Looks like a baby. <gasps> There's a bottle of conditioner in me. What? My wife and I belong to a wholesale club, and I live in the mother of Jeffrey's hair conditioner. Uh-huh. We were in the shower, and we put it in me, and but it went all the way in. Your wife put the bottle in? Um, in my, um, in my, uh, my behind. We're going to send an ambulance. Can you wait? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you all right? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just a oh, yeah. yeah. Surprised. I would be surprised, too. <laughs> I'm sorry, one second. Sweetie, can you please get the cat out of here? Uh, the ambulance is about four minutes away. Oh, no, I can really feel it. The bottle? I think I'm going to see it. Is that bad? <laughs> hey, it came out. No, where's the cat? 911, what's your All name? right, there is you go. Is this... is any... He said it's come, it came from CD, which is on Netflix. Very funny. Anyway, they did a great job because I thought the doggy one, the doggy one specifically, I was like, that's so funny. I got By dog. the way, speaking of Michael Matson, if you go to his cameo. Oh, does he have cameo? Oh, yes. Can is, we bring it up? No, well, it would be. Well, Fernando, how, much, how much is it? What? It's probably. I, I'll like, find out. I'll find like out for $250, you. $250. But he, he sounds exactly like that dog guy. <laughs> like he is <laughs> wasted. He did one of the cameos I saw Michael Matson do. He did it in a restroom inside of a restaurant so he went to the bathroom while, while eating and then like did a cameo and then came out of the oh out of the right my restroom. god i am he's looking like, at this he's right like now. dollars for michael like, madsen three three hundred hey but he's got five stars all the way i mean honestly it's exactly what you want you want That's a slice reservoir of his dogs life, man, man. <laughs> Straight up, dude. That's a you want a slice of Michael Madsen's life. It's in the bathroom of a restaurant. It's here in with the fucking he's he's got a, a life jacket on, sitting by his pool. Honestly, Speaking, I love cameo, man. Some of these reviews are crazy because you forget he has huge fans out there. He's like, Thank you so much, Michael. You're my favorite actor. He's a great movie. actor. And then the other one says, My mom was beaming and in shock to hear your get well message from her idol, Michael Madsen. That's her idol. That's her idol. She, Michael it Jackson. seems like she's Man. dying of like cancer, and she's like, one wish, Michael Madsen to say. That is a fucking shame that we're going <laughs> to. Fred Stoller, the Fred Stoller, is only t- is $25, and Michael Who's Madsen. Fred Stoller? He's a, f- he's a guy. He was on oh, Seinfeld. He, he's in he's Seinfeld. Oh, oh, I love it. Oh, it. oh, I love oh it. that time I Jerry Wines. Oh, I don't remember. That's my impression of him. Oh, yeah. guys, I've been oh, working no, on my no, Trump no, impression. Yeah. Wishing happy birthday to Eric. <laughs> Giant 65. You're just a get kid, a, Eric. Uh, get a glass of water, buddy. <laughs> your grandchildren, uh, Connor and Keegan. And I think Michael is involved somewhere. This is uh, un- this makes me uncomfortable to have. Are you retired? Why is it? And, uh, they claim you need a good square meal. And uh, I like making eye contact. Court officer. I run into a few of those in my day. <laughs> so I hope you're well and uh, have a good retirement and happy birthday to you. From Michael Madsen. <laughs> 
He just, <laughs> why is he, why is he <laughs> shooting it like this? I don't know. Because someone told him that you look better from a higher angle. Yeah, uh, I, I, I is, guess. This is the most recent cameos. He, when he first started doing this, it was behind Chinese restaurants in the alley. Uh, so this is a perfected these, version. This is his version of like a perfected, more cleaned up version of a cameo. Oh, That's his my. brand. That's his setup. But well, guys, good for him. I was super excited because, yes, it's not relevant anymore, but that's the best part. I finally worked out my Trump impression. Oh, you want to? Oh. Okay, we're going to end the stream with wow. this. So this is your, this is it. This is the swan song for this did. week. I finally thank you did all it. so much for watching. Thanks for giving to our Patreon. Honestly, it was like the hook. And as soon as I okay. the fucking hook, I was like, okay. Do you want any setup? Do you need any setup or anything? Uh, give me a scenario. Mr. Trump, your Diet Coke has arrived. Wouldn't be prudent. That is not, that is, <laughs> that's not, but that's Dana Carvey doing George W. Bush, Wouldn't H.W. Be, H.W. Wouldn't be prudent <laughs> for me to have it. I, I'm not, that's not prudent. <laughs> I That's feel all. your pain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if Forrest Gump was president, we, uh, you know, that was wonderful. Oh, we actually I have another bit. All right, set me up okay. again. Okay. What, yeah, if, yeah. For Trump? Marcus, yes. you, you set him up this time. Sure. Uh, Mr. Trump, your hotel is no longer where it should be. It's disappeared into space. <laughs> you got to finish? <laughs> no, Can that's. I finish. Uh huh. Can I finish? That's Can I Ross finish? Perot. Can I finish? That's Ross Perot. Can I finish? <laughs> you know it's pretty good though it's pretty it's good bad. you as know far as, as far nandini as the, uh nandini says straight up someone says that is not trump huh. what are you talking about no well, yes it is um, i our, just said it was our yeah. listeners have exactly wouldn't be prudent i'm um, donald trump <laughs> i got one i got wouldn't a donald trump. oh yeah like, how is it what's the deal all right, everyone. Thank it's you that so easy. Much for Honestly, he's the new he's the new fucking Christopher Walken. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. I I'm already miss all the comedy. Don't you? I already miss all of it. So uh, much. You imagine that. Um the the life of a sad Trump impersonator is something I would like to see a documentary of right now. I want it. I don't want to rise up. I it's don't want to see that fucking motherfucker's face ever again, but I will see the life and times of a Trump impersonator and watch their, I want to see oh. what their life is like. Oh, where they have to get their money. Anyway, thank oh. you all so much for watching. Thanks for giving to our Patreon. We hope you're doing okay out there. Do I and make you horny? I'm Donald Trump. That's amazing, Henry. For Marcus, Henry, and Ben, thank you all so much. Love you guys. Hail yourselves. Hail Satan, you piece. Goodbye for none.